Alright, what is up you guys? It's Chris here. So t since TikTok wanted to go ahead and remove my post for violating community guidelines, I decided to go ahead and just make a YouTube video and talk about it here. I know it's a little bit a long overdue, but as we're heading into 2023, I kind of want to recap all the different pickups I've made in 2022 and kind of highlight my favorite, my top 22 favorite pickups from the past year. So I know 22 is kind of a lot of different things to go through, so I'll try to add some timestamps um, to help you know ease and navigate through this video as well. The first category we're going to go through is going to be you know, clothing uh, for outerwear. So the first item for uh, clothing and outerwear is going to have to be this home to say Isimiyaki pleated blazer. So this is something you've probably seen all over your Instagram Explore page feed, but when I first saw this uh, blazer, it was on Ken, Ken Ijima. Uh, whenever it was like 2019, I was still a senior in college and I, I saw it and I was like, this is the most beautiful piece. I had to have it and it was just way, way out of my budget, right? So, now, fast forward a few years, I'm working, working man in a corporate job, an actual corporate job, for those who know, um, you know, and I definitely do not regret this purchase one bit. Um, I wear it from time to time. It's a size one if it's a little bit big on me, but um, I still love it uh, nonetheless. I even wore it to a work event, but fantastic jacket, and I think it's going to be in my wardrobe forever. I'm actually probably going to have this on for the video. Alright, so for the next outerwear pickup, it's going to have to be this Banana Republic puffer. It's actually a woman's puffer and it's slightly cropped uh, with a super high neckline and, um, and collar. So the reason why I like this jacket a lot is that it's reminiscent of the famous Rick Owens puffer, but for a fraction of the price. Like, I think I paid $225, $250 for this retail or on sale. Um, and it honestly is a perfect fit and it, it really complements my body really well. well. Big shout out to Kenneth Wynn. Um, he's the one who actually put me on this item. I saw him wear it on Instagram and I had to reach out to him. But fantastic piece. Alright, so the next item for outerwear is going to be this Arcteryx Cassier uh, jacket. So this jacket is actually a snowboard jacket. And I actually got this off the Regear site for a fraction of the retail price. They don't actually make this model yet or anymore, um, but I, I think it's pretty good con considering what I'm using it for. So I don't really snowboard or ski that often. I have only been once in my entire life, um, but I find this to be one of those investment pieces. Yeah, I mean, you can't really go wrong with a nice solid Gore-Tex jacket. It doesn't have to be Arc'teryx. It could be Uniqlo Block Tech. Um, you're not going to be, unless you're climbing like a mountains and you know, going through tough terrain, then yeah, shell out extra for the, the Arc'teryx if you need to, but if you are going to get an Arc'teryx jacket, make sure you get it on sale somehow, or use through the Regear site or on Grail, or wherever it may be. But solid pickup. Another uh, one of my favorite pickups for this past year is going to have to be this Vujade uh, knit. So this is also a size 1, it fits me pretty decently. Um, one thing I've noticed about the fit though is that whenever I have it on, it feels like I spam lateral raises about 5,000 times. I look like a damn linebacker. Um, I'll try to find some, some some pictures or something to help showcase that, but nonetheless, whenever I do have this knit on and take pictures of it, I always get compliments. People always ask me about it. Um, the quality is pretty good. Um, aside from the fact that it is definitely pilling, uh, just a bit. I don't know if you can see it on the camera from that far away, but it is it is a bit taxed on the price for retail, but it is something you kind of have to do when you're paying support for these local, small, or not local, but smaller brands. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of Ken and the team, so I didn't mind shutting out the extra, extra dollars for that. But definitely one of those items that are going to be in my wardrobe, likely forever, unless something tragic happens. The next items that I want to showcase for my favorite pickups, it's kind of a cheat code because there's actually two, but it's going to be quality hoodies, right? So I'm someone who loves to be comfortable at all times, even when I'm at home working, I like to lounge around, be warm and cozy. So I think quality hoodies is an essential in anybody's wardrobe. So the first one I want to showcase is going to be the Ore New York City Manhattan hoodie. Ray and the team did a fantastic job with just the fit and finish of this hoodie. 
the perfect drop shoulder and crop. It definitely accentuates my body proportions. I'm a very short and soft person, but this helps elongate my legs. It is very, very flattering, and the quality is, is fantastic. The hood, perfect size as well. The next hoodie I wanted to kind of showcase, or wanted to showcase, is going to be this one from Chromo Valley. Um, very, very small, hidden brand. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on this one. The, the text at the front says, she makes dirty words sound pretty. It is, I believe, Pierce the Veil reference. And honestly, for the amount of money I paid for this hoodie, the quality is phenomenal. So I believe um, he drew inspiration for the fit from a Hyder Ackerman jacket or Hyder Ackerman hoodie. Um, on the back, you can definitely see these uh, stitch starting on the back shoulder. Lovely, lovely touch. And honestly, this is probably my favorite fitting hoodie I have. Um, it's a little bit wrinkly right now, so it might not be doing it justice, but I'll be sure to post some pictures on the screen. But amazing hoodie. So that was all the outerwear pickups that I really loved in 2022. So we're gonna be talking about footwear next. The first pair of shoes that I want to showcase. It is a bit high beast, I, I gotta admit, and you probably are tired of seeing it, but they gotta be the Rick Owens Geo Baskets. These definitely hold a special place in my heart. I think these are gonna last me for quite some time. Hopefully I keep these forever, and once they're beat to death, I'll just put them in a box somewhere in my future home, and just to, to have as one of those better pieces. But I love these. They're a bit high beast, I must admit, but hey, I gotta say. The next pair of shoes I wanted to talk about is gonna be these Heron Preston chunky side zip leather boots. And man, like, these are one of the shoes I wear almost every single day. And the reason why I love them, gotta admit, is this chunky, chunky sole. Like, whenever I'm wearing these bad boys, I feel like a giant, right? So, I don't know if you can tell, but I am not the biggest person out there. I'm about 5'2 and a half, 5'3. And when I wear these, I feel like a whole different man. So I use these as my designated going out shoe because, you know, you walk into the club, walk into the bar, you're a little bit taller, you feel a little more confident, but that was the old me. I am a spoken for man. Vina, if you're watching this, didn't mean any of that. <clears throat> Fire boot, I love the chunky silhouette. Um, wider pants, they drape over these beautifully. Um, definitely love these, got these for a really great deal. Next shoe I want to showcase is going, are going to be these MF Pen and Adu Paris Collaborated Derby. Um, I forget the model number, I think it's 1461. Cannot be too sure, but I love these because of how sleek and beautiful these are. These can be dressed up and dressed down. I love the rib being on the midsole. It has like good texture to the entire shoe, as well as the shoelaces with the white speckles and the white contrast stitching. It's just, I, didn't, I know I said I didn't want to review the shoe, but dude, come on, beautiful. Next pair of shoe are gonna be these Toga Virilis loafers, right? So the reason why I love these is that I'm a big fan of that clean aesthetic with that slight add of detail to help pop, give it some, give it some pop and contrast. And these, the steel finishes, it's just, I, I'm not lost for words. They're beautiful. Um, I always love loafers. It's really hard for me to find loafers that fit me well. Um, I got these in a size 39, they fit me okay. I had to add the Dr. Scholl's insert because, you know, small feet gang over here. But whenever I wear these, man, I just feel elegant. Like, especially with the combination with the Home Placé blazer, almost undefeated combo. So the next shoe pickup and last pickup for this category are gonna have to be the Maison Margiela replica Gats. So I know um, this is not an original, um, design by Margiela. It's an adaptation, I believe. Was it Hungarian or is it Bulgarian? Austri Austrian shoe. Um, but I love these. I have always loved these for quite some time. I remember when I was early on in college, I got the Adidas uh, 
Jeremy Armour Trainer um, samples, and those were honestly a pretty great alternative to these. Um, but the fit and the material is not as great, obviously. You're paying like 3x the amount of money for the Argel ones. But one thing I really love about these shoes is because it kind of reminds me of, like, I guess, how far I've come. I remember in college, I was working out with a friend of mine, Nick, at the UT Rec, and he was wearing a pair of these to work out in. And I was like, dude, you must be balling. Because you're, you're, you're just like 20 years old, you bought these, and you're working out in these, you're squatting in these, that's crazy. And fast forward a few years, I had the opportunity to get my hands on them myself, and pull the trigger and don't regret at all. The silhouette, in my opinion, is timeless. Um, it has been around for quite some time, the silhouette that is, and it's still in style. Um, in my opinion, it's like a more luxe version of the Samba that has been rising to popularity again. Beautiful shoe, the Samba too, but it's just a, a little differentiator. The next category we're gonna talk about are gonna be accessories. The first one I want to really highlight is probably going to be the biggest one. Is actually what's on my wrist right now. This is actually a Cartier Tank Must. Um, this is actually the Quartz move Movement version. Um, the reason why this is one of my favorite pickups is of course not just because of how beautiful and timeless it is, it's because of the significance it has for me. But I've been into watches for quite some time. And I think with luxury purchases, such as a watch, you typically want to associate some type of life milestone, um, some, any huge accomplishment um, to it. And when I first started working after graduating, I always set these different goals. Like, once I start making this amount, um, I'll give myself a watch. Then I would hit that certain that you know, goal and set a new goal for myself. Like, oh, I don't know if I deserve it now. Maybe once I do this and this and this, it was a constant moving goalpost. And it was November of 2022 and I started to realize like, is it ever going to be the right time? Um, arguably there's always going to be a better moment, but with me, I kept pushing it and pushing it out. And I realized that I was kind of stripping myself with, from that joy. So I decided one day, you know what? I've done all I've set myself up to do um, the past two, three years, it's time. And what, what better thing to kind of you know, mark that um, than a, a classic timepiece such as the Cartier Tank Must. So this is definitely one of the big hitters um, of this year. I literally wear it every single day and every time I wear it, um, it makes me smile. Plus, it fits into my wardrobe and aesthetic almost seamlessly. Next accessory, I'm also wearing it right now. It's going to be this Isabel Morant feather necklace. Um, I got from the Essence sale uh, earlier last year. So I actually broke the original chain, um, but I got a replacement from, from Amazon, which is honestly pretty much the same thing. But Next uh, accessory pickup that I want to highlight is going to be this archive slash vintage Yoji Yamamoto crossbody bag. I actually bought this from a shop called Pilgrim in New York City last April. This bag is just beautiful. Um, how much stuff you can fit into it is quite deceiving. You can't really tell because of how the camera's angled, but it's a beautiful piece. It adds that last finishing detail to a simple outfit. So definitely one of my top pickups for this year. For the last accessory pickup I want to highlight, I don't actually have it on me, it's in my car but they are a pair of prescription sunglasses from Warwick Parker. For me, I've been blind since I came out of the womb. So I've never been able to use sunglasses outside when I'm swimming or at the beach and be able to see. I would always have to do the really ghetto method of putting my sunglasses over my prescription glasses. Um, but since last year, I've had, I have insurance. I have vision insurance for once. So I decided to get myself a pair and they have made my quality of life this much better. I would definitely recommend investing to a pair. The next category we're gonna talk about is gonna be around furniture, slash home decor, slash home goods, slash that personal care type of thing. And the first thing I want to kind of highlight and showcase is going to actually be my dupe of the Michael Ducaro Togo Fireside Chair. So 
Honestly, I typically would prefer to have the authentic and the original piece, but I didn't want to pay $4,000 for a chair that I would also have to wait, you know, 12 months plus uh, to even get, right, to buy from the actual manufacturer itself. The Togo chair is definitely one of those that you see all over Instagram and you might get a little bit tired of seeing it, but honestly, it's something I fell in love with and still am in love with. Every time someone comes into the apartment, they gravitate towards a chair. And you know, the reason why it's one of my favorites is because as I move into this space, I want to make sure I curated um, an environment that makes people feel welcome. They want to, you know, lounge around, get comfortable and talk and chat. And I think the Togo chair, just given how low it is to the ground, um, it really does have that conversational feel to it. So the other thing um, for home goods and furniture I want to showcase is another dupe. It's going to be a dupe of the Isamu Noguchi uh, coffee table. Um, it's something I'm actually using uh, to film this video on, but it is something that is definitely at the center of the living room. It's one of those things that also people come into and they speak about first, right? It's going to be the Togo chair um, as well as the Noguchi table. The next pickup for home decor and accessories are going to have to be these non cushions that I got from Design Within Reach. They are from this designer whose name I cannot pronounce, so I'll just leave it on the screen. But the reason why I love these so much is because it adds so much color and depth to the apartment. As you can tell, I have the cement block um, in the apartment, so the entire environment is really cold. The furniture is gray, black, and, and taupe. So adding these were a really great touch. And people usually always just grab one of these and just fiddle, fiddle around with them when they're here. It's just one of those things that helps lighten up the mood. So honestly, you can probably buy the dupes on Amazon for really cheap because um, 140, 150 bucks for a pillow, one of these is a little bit taxed. But again, I was going through something, saw it and was like, you know what, I'm buying it. But do not regret, 100% we'll do it again. The last pickup I want to showcase for home decor slash personal fragrance or personal care is going to have to be the Matcha 26 by La Lava. So aside from just how amazing it smells, the reason why I love this purchase so much is because it does so much for your just overall well-being, honestly, when you walk into a space knowing that you smell good. So if you aren't into personal fragrance yet, I highly recommend getting into it. Um, it doesn't have to be from one of these uh, price brands such as Olavo um, or yeah, Aesop, but you can also look into some cheaper alternatives. In the last section for the pickup video is going to be around personal things that are not necessarily materialistic in nature or fashion related. They're more so just general things. Right? So the first thing I want to kind of call out as one of my favorite things that I purchased in 2022 for this category is going to have to be my two trips to New York City. I was able to go with some of my closest friends and my cousin and we were able to kind of create these long lasting memories. And every time I think about New York now, I think about those times I've had with them, the different adventures we were able to go on and so on. Um, so it definitely does hold a nice place in my heart and left the lasting impression of what 2022 was for me. The other pickup I want to call out for this category is going to have to be my ticket um, slash tickets to Freaky Deaky, which is an EDM festival um, that was hosted here in Houston, Texas. This was one of those most memorable uh, nights for me because I was able to experience it with some of my closest friends as well as my cousins. And this was also the first time I made a move officially on my current girlfriend. Definitely be sure to invest in uh, creating more memories with your friends and family. So another pickup I really loved in 2022 is going to kind of be out there. It's going to be different from anything you've, you've seen so far, but it has to be my Glock 43X. I live in the city. It is notorious for, you know, small petty crimes. Um, just you hear about all these crazy things going on and for me it helps provide me with that sense of protection as well as um, comfort that I am able to protect myself in my home as well as my loved ones. I know gun laws is a pretty touchy topic, topic in the United States and I do agree that there definitely needs to be stricter ones to be quite honest. Um, in, in Texas especially I think it's way way too easy to get a gun 
Like, but I don't want to turn this into political uh, debate or anything like that. But it's definitely one of my favorite picture pickups because of just what um, it does uh, for me and my sense of production. Last but not least, my last pickup for the category and probably one of my favorite pickups of 22 is going to be the Fujifilm Nissax Mini 11 camera. I bought this towards the middle of the year and I really wish I bought it sooner because with this tiny little $100, $70 camera, I was able to create and capture so many different memories with my friends. We actually had to buy three. Um, two of them broke throughout this year. It's pretty stupid, but with these cameras, we were able to capture hundreds and hundreds of different films that all tell a different story for a different day. And it's something I will honestly reflect on um, when I'm older and just be super happy that I've done. So if you've always been wanting to kind of get into photography or videography or anything to help capture those moments with your friends, I highly recommend it because it's always better to start now than later um, before it's too late. I mean, I don't want to get all depressing and uh, pessimistic about things, but you just never know. And those were all of my favorite pickups from 2022. I just wanted to give a big thank you for those who sat through this entire thing. I wanted to keep it quick, but I felt like as I was talking about all the different items, I kind of went overboard. So I do apologize if this is like a 20 plus minute video. This is my first ever video uh, back on YouTube. So please um, feel free to subscribe. And be on the lookout for other pickup videos and other fashion related content and lifestyle content that's coming on the way. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Have a good